Well, good day to everybody. And how are my little programmers doing after the weekend? How many of you have been um, creating animations and your own uh, little programming uh, code and algorithms in uh, Missouri? I know some of you, many of you have through the chat group uh, over the last week have talked about all the wonderful things that you are doing. So I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so happy that you are actually experimenting with all the things that I've taught you. And I know that, um, you know, I have very little time, just three weeks, but um, with all the experimenting that you're going to do on your own, uh, I'm sure that you'll create some really wonderful and exciting animations. Um, first, let me just, <clears throat> okay. So uh, let's get on with the lesson for today then. Firstly, uh, just to quickly introduce everything. Uh, I am Mr. A.F. Gabriel, and uh, together with the Department of Basic Education and Africa Teen Geeks, bringing you this special holiday classes uh, on robotics and coding, uh, a new curriculum which is going to be piloted in primary schools this year, 2021, when we go back to school. Um, many provinces may delay the opening of school. We know that was supposed to be the 27th of January, but due to the fact that we are still in the co coronavirus um, peak, uh, I think students may only be returning to school on the 15th. So please keep in touch with your schools and your governing bodies to be sure that you go to school on the right day. Now, let us begin today's class. I'm going to show you something exciting today. And although I said initially that I might not be able to combine with, with animation over the weekend, uh, I was experimenting a little bit and I've decided that it's, it's we can do that. So uh, let's have a go. Okay, guys, this lesson um, is called Math Operations. Now, some time ago, you were introduced to this word. Again, I'm not too familiar with primary school, so I don't know when they first start doing it. But, uh, and we already spoke about this on Friday. I introduced this topic to you on Friday, and I asked the question, what are, are, are math operations? And, and many of you uh, had already uh, given me the correct answer. So well done, you guys know what that is. So I'm not gonna waste time going back through Friday's thing. But in school, um, you know, we, we, we were introduced in primary schools to what we call the four basic math operations. Now, there are lots of uh, other operations that have uh, built up from the basic four, right? And by now, grade seven, you might have come across some others like squaring and maybe finding cubes and maybe finding square roots. Uh, these are all additional operations, uh, but they are all combinations of the basic ones. So just like how you have primary colors, which I think are red, green, and blue, and you can combine those colors in the right quantities to create all the other colors in our spectrum of colors that we recognize in the world, the same can be done with the four, well, that's why we call them the four basic operations. We can create all sorts of other operations which, which are combinations of these. But for, these, for this course, we will only use the four basic operations. Now, let's go quickly through them. Division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, okay? Those are the four basic um, operations. Okay, so I know you're familiar with them and you probably already through your math classes in school have been adding numbers and multiplying them and subtracting them and dividing them, right? Almost everything involves math, you know that, right? When you go to high school uh, and you have to choose subjects, you can't, you know, you might be able to pick things like physics and accounting and biology and you can leave one of them out but in South Africa, you cannot leave out math. If you'd like to be a scientist, you can do pure math. Uh, that's what they call it. It's just called mathematics. If you're not good at math and you don't want to go into science, 
you have to choose the other branch of math, which is called math literacy. So there is no escaping math at, in anything. So um, we generally, even in programming, will have to end up using math at some point or other to get things done or to do calculations or to work stuff out. Uh, there is no way a computer will be able to be effective in its programming without the use of mathematics. Okay, so there's a lot more complex calculations which will come up in your career as a programmer should you choose to pursue this. But for now, we will obviously start with the four basic ones. Now in uh, Masora, we have these four basic operations and they are found in the operators block. And if you look at the next slide, you will see that we have the four of them and this is how they look. We have got addition, as in this order, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, note that whilst addition and subtraction are recognized symbols from mathematics, multiplication and division are not, okay? You can see that there is an asterisk that is um, on the third slide here, you'll find that that funny looking symbol is an asterisk. I did mention this to you before. And an asterisk is used for multiplication, not the times sign that you know in math. And the reason for that, of course, is the confusion with the, um, with the X sign. The letter X can also look like a multiplication, right? And also the division sign is not used uh, because of the dash and the colon and a forward slash <clears throat> is used for division. So these four symbols on your screen in green, I'm gonna read them in order again, is addition, subtraction. The third one is multiplication. And the fourth one is division. Now, I didn't list them in the order that we will see them. When you go to MSR, and we're going to do that shortly, <clears throat> when you go there, you'll find them in this order. I cut and paste this little image from uh, Zora Blocks itself. But I listed them in this order. Now, you can answer on the chat. Is anybody wanting to answer, why do you think I listed them in this order that I've got division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction? I didn't just uh, do just type anything. That order is meaningful to me. Now, can somebody help me explain what's the meaning in my, ah, look at there. Kira, I know they drum this thing in school, right? They drum it in school. Right, <laughs> okay, well done. Super intelligent class, you all master scientists. The idea of bod mass is correct. Now, what is bod mass? Bod mass is math's way of teaching us what we call the order of the operations. The order matters, okay? We'll talk about the order in a moment, but the order of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction appear as it is on school. So well done, bod mass, and you can see on my slide, I have underlined the D, the M, the A, and the S, and you will see I, I, I listed these four operations um, in that order. B and O is for brackets, if you have brackets in your calculations, and the off word, which, which also um, means multiplication, but we, we won't worry about those two now. We're only worrying about the four basic operations, and so you'll see my order. D for division, M for multiplication, A for addition, and S for subtraction. So well done to all of you. I'm happy you know your bod mass. You're making my work very easy. When we go into coding, uh, it's going to be very easy for me to teach you how to uh, get the order correct. Now, let's look quickly at the order of operations. Let's suppose, look, if we've got two things, and let's just quickly go back to that slide. You'll see that Scratch is dealing with two at a time. We'll talk about more than two in a moment. Right, so <clears throat> let's look at order of operations. If we've got two, it's not a problem. Three plus four, um, is, is seven, for example, and, and four plus three. If we go in two different orders there, that's not a problem. So we've got two operations, two numbers is only one operation, right? Can you think, think about that? Again, let's go back to this. Two numbers, only one operation, that it's either addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. The problem comes in is when we add in a third number. And a third number will create for us another or a second operation. Let's look at an example. Okay, so we've got three plus four times five. So there's our instruction. It reads exactly like that. 
three plus four times five. Remember this one, we'll use it when we go now to, to Masora blocks. <clears throat> now the question is, will the computer do three plus four, which is seven, and then multiply it by five to give us an answer of 35? Or will it do four times five, which is 20, then add three and give us an answer of 23? So can you see, if you do the operations in a different order, you will actually get a different answer. The answer is not even the same. So the order matters. So here's our choices. Choice one, is the answer 35? Or choice two, is the answer 23? Okay, so answer on the chat. Remember, use your bot mass. Right, so I've got some different answers. Some, a lot of people saying 23. Uh, I have got uh, lots of 23s. I've got 135 from uh, Sheko. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Uh, except for Sheko, everybody is saying 23. Bongo Kresha said three, 230. I'm sure you meant 20, 23. We've got that. We only got two choices. Sean Pelusa has got 25. Uh, sorry, Sean, there's only two choices, 35 or 23. Uh, right. Okay, Sean, you corrected yours. Uh, you meant 35. Kwanga, 35. And the answer <clears throat> is 23, everybody. Okay, now let's use our bod mass correctly. Bod mass says that the computer will do division, multiplication, addition is third. So multiplication comes first and the computer will multiply first and then add. So I, you could see that I've got the multiplication in red indicating that it will do four times five first and then add the three and give us 23. Okay, so that is multiple operations. But the other thing is, uh, let me ask this question. Help me on the chat, guys. Um, did they teach you in school math how to work out percentages of things? Ah, yes. So you're familiar with percentages. Good, good. I had to ask that question because remember, I teach high school math. By the time you get to me, you'll have to be a master at percentages. Okay. So let me just run one more slide on percentages and then we'll go to do some coding. Okay, now let's, I took an easy one because when I was planning this, I wasn't too sure what grade sevens I've done with percentages. So if you got 20 out of 40, how many percent is that? See, I'm testing you now. We all said yes. Ronel says 50%. Okay, right, all right, okay, don't hurt yourselves. You're very good, very good, very smart, right? Let's just quickly go over the calculation. If you want to work out 20 out of 40, 20 out of 40 is divided. That means you got 20 out of 40, 20 divided by the 40, let's say it was a test. So you got 20 marks out of the 40 that you're supposed to, do, to get. And you know your teacher will give you, like say on my screen, that's how the teachers write it sometimes. They put 20, they put like a division sign, 40, and then you got a big ring over the whole thing. Right, But if you want to calculate it as a percentage, you simply multiply the result by 100, right? So to calculate a percentage, um, that's the procedure, right? I thought we will probably use the basic operations and some percentages when we are doing calculations in, uh, in our programming and our coding, right? I think looking at the time, we might not get as far as percentages today, uh, but we've got some cool stuff to do with just the basic operations. Right, so again, um, that brings us to the end of this slide presentation, and I'm going to close that for now. Oh, let's just, uh, let's just minimize it. And let's go to our browser. And you'll see that I've got uh, Masora blocks opened up, all cool. And we're going to do some programming. Now, let's first experiment with the, um, with the operations. Let's just, before we do any animation, let's just show you how to use them, right? So uh, this sprite is 
let's just uh, use a human sprite. And my PC is being slow again today. Pray, guys. Let's pray for no crashes. SCOM has really been treating us badly this time around. Okay. Oh, boy. This is really slower than I would have hoped. Wow, it only, it only just did the delete. Sometimes it's off to a slow start and then it starts to get a bit better. All right, here's our... Okay, to save time, I'm just going to pick Abby. Oh, what happened there? We accidentally picked somebody else. Sorry, goodbye. We don't want any dancing right now. All right, so let, let, let's let let Abby do our, our calculations uh, so far, right? So we'll get Abby... To, to do a calculation, right? And let's first, let's just, um, let's just experiment with the uh, operations. Now we will start our usual story. When we click the flag, we want Abby to do things. And let's give Abby, Abby a speech bubble and let her, let's just do a specific calculation, right? I can add six plus two, let her say that. And then let's see what happens when we do the addition. Now, can you see this block here? It's oval. I'm going to go to the operations and this is the slide that I showed you. The four operations are there. There's lots of other things. We've already used the random, right? So we've got a few more things to fiddle with out there. Don't worry about those right now, but there's the operations that we're going to be using today. So let's pick one because we're going to do addition. And then in this one, we can click and put a six. And in this one, we'll click and put a two, right? And um, here we go, right? And, 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 and then let's see what she does. Oh, well, there isn't, <clears throat> actually, let's, let's uh, change that. It's, there's no delay there, so she'll give the answer so fast and we won't see it. So let's just use that one. Okay, now you're also learning if you know, if you change your mind on a block, what to do. Now I wanna move this green thing here. So I grab, oh, I'm grabbing the wrong thing. I gotta grab the green thing, right? Can you see how I separated it? And then I'm gonna put that there. This one, I'm going to chuck it away. I don't need it, so I drag it there. And this new block, I click, I hold, I drag it, and I join it up. So she's gonna, she's gonna say that. Okay, let's give her two calculations. Let's do subtraction as well. So let's ask. Let's say um, I can also do um, six minus. Okay, and let's drag another save block there. Let's go to our operators. This time we will choose minus, and the numbers are the same, six, two. All right, notice I'm putting the numbers in here before I attach it. Sometimes, you know, it's a bit irritating to try and type in stuff when it's attached to something else. Sometimes you make mistakes and click on something. Right, again, remind you, can you see as soon as, even if I let it go from, okay, now nothing's gonna happen. If I let go, it just drops there. But as soon as it highlights, can you see, I'm, I'm not quite on top of it, but if I let the mouse go, it snaps into place. So that's all kind of good. Okay, uh, right, now let's run this program and let's see what Abby does. I can add six plus two, she says, and eight. I can also do six minus two, four. Now, interesting that she has given the correct answers, but we didn't answer. Can you see that? We didn't put an answer there. We put an operation there. I, I could have easily taken this out and changed that to eight. And now the computer is doing no operations, no calculations. I have uh, given the speech bubble and I also gave the answer. That will also work, it, it will say eight. 
But who had to do the addition? You and I, the programmers, right? We don't do that. Wherever the computer can do calculations like this, uh, and that's what these operations are for. We really want the computer to do all our calculations. We don't want to do all the work. So what did the computer do? It added these two things up and then uh, it didn't put six plus two in the speech bubble, it put the answer. So this green thing gets calculated. The computer will calculate six plus two and, and works it out to eight. And then it will read say eight for two seconds. Here, the computer will calculate what is six minus two works out to four. So it follows the instruction, say four for two seconds. Let's run it one more time. If you find the delays of two seconds are too quick, you can always fiddle with that. We won't just waste our time with that. Okay. Right. And now, um, uh, one more experiment. Uh, I just want to experiment with division. I left that last on purpose. And I'll, and what's the other one? And multiplication. So let's, now you notice you have to take, you can't change this to multiplication. You know, in your math book or something, you can just scratch out or turn things around. Unfortunately, because all the operations are separate, uh, if we want to do multiplication and division, we will need separate operations for those. So if you look at those two, we drag those in, and I should have actually put the numbers in first, but now let's see what we do. Uh, let's do six and two again. This time we should get 12. Let's change the speech bubble. I can multiply six and two. I, let's delete that. I can also do 15 divided by three. Okay, and let's put that there. 15 divided by three. Okay, so six times two, everybody is 12 and 15 divided by three is five. So we should get the answers of 12 and five. I can multiply six and two, 12. I can also do 15 divided by three, five. That is correct. So again, can you see she gives us the correct answer? Okay, everybody with me so far? Okay, good. Now, one more thing with division. I'm gonna change the three to four. Now guys, uh, Um, what's going to happen there? 15 divided by four. Uh, well, what's the problem with that division? Yes. Well, what is 15 divided by four? Yes, 15 is not a multiple of four, very good. So four can't go into 15, uh, but if you put 15 divided by four in your calculator, what do you think you're gonna get? We get a decimal number, right? You're gonna get a decimal number. Four can go into 15 three times, and you've got a remainder three, which is three quarters. So it should give you 3.75. So yes, four cannot go into 15 and you end up with decimal numbers, right? So remember um, the co computers and calculators do work with decimal numbers. And again, I'm not too sure how much of decimal numbers you did in grade seven, but let's quickly uh, see what Abby does. And she does say 3.75, did you see that? She gave us the correct answer. So why did I demonstrate that to you? Uh, no problem. Uh, the computer can also work with decimal numbers. You can put decimal numbers with a digit. Only remember, in school math, we generally use a comma or something like that when we're working with decimal numbers. Computers use the, a point, an actual point, right? Okay, so um, uh, just quickly to show you again, just keep a note of the, on the bubble when she says 15 divided by four and gives the answer, you'll see, can you see that's a point, 3.75.
<clears throat> so just remember that. Even when you're typing things, if you put a comma, you, you will probably uh, get some errors. Okay, now, um, having done that, um, I think it is time for us to experiment because I don't want to lose too much of time uh, with one bit of animation working together with the basic operations, right? We might, I might get back to the bot mass idea in our next class. I don't think there will be time right to the end, but uh, I, I, I think we want to just work with the basic ones. And I know you, you are excited to see how these can connect with, with animation. We're also going to connect them. We're also going to connect them to the use of, of variables. Now, if you run this program, you will see. Let's first look at variables. Uh, Abby can only do six times two and 15 divided by four. Let's check this out for now, right? Let's leave one operation there, right? Now let's say we wanted, and in fact, let's let's keep addition. Addition is, is much simpler, right? Now let's let's add two things, but let's say Abby will 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 answer will do the addition, but guess where the numbers are going to come from? The numbers will come from the user. How do we get numbers from the user? Everybody, you can answer on the chat. Who can remember? What is the thing that we use? What's it called when we're getting information from the user? Start with I. Thinking. Okay. It is input. Kira is correct. She said IPO. The I for IPO is input. Whenever the user needs to communicate with the computer, he has to give input. So we'll ask the user for two numbers, right? So let's get Abby to ask the user. So this first one will say, uh, and no, in fact, we're not gonna, we don't need this. We will need the sensing, right? And you all remember what we choose when we want to ask the user for input. We use the ask together with the answer. So we'll ask this question. Uh, enter your first number, right? So that will be an, an instruction, right? Now, because we are using input, we require a variable. We'll have to take a variable and store the answer. So let's make a variable. Okay, and we're gonna call this variable num. Sorry, I like to use a capital N. Num one, meaning number one. See, that's a nice name. It, we know what it, it is. There's only one sprite, so we can leave that. Click OK. And number one appears there on the screen. And then we will say set. And you click there, and you don't want to use the computer's variable. We want to use our one that we made. Here it is on the list. Num one, and we set it to answer. So you remember how this works? I will quickly remind you. The computer will ask you for ask the user for a number and wait. And only when the number is entered, it appears at the bottom of the stage. It takes the answer and it puts it uh, into the variable that you've created for that purpose, right? Um, now um, let's duplicate this. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to teach you a shortcut now. If you want to make a copy of any code that you've got, the computer will make a copy from that point right down to the end. So, you know, be careful about duplicating. I wanna click duplicate. Can you see it made another copy for me? So it saves me time. Yes, you can drag some stuff. Oh, I accidentally set the program going. Right, and then this one is going to be enter your, and I'm gonna delete first, and I'm going to say enter your second number. And I need another variable. Let's go to click, make a variable. Enter the variable's name, capital N U M, and this one we'll call num2. Click OK. And now we want to take that second number, num2, and whatever <clears throat> number the user enters on the keyboard, we want to put that in num2. Okay, so what does the code do for us so far? It captures two numbers from the user. Now I only taught you this late last week, and we had a weekend. So I'm quickly going to run that just to remind you about how the input process works. So Abby says, enter your first number and let's say 12. Remember how we do it? We type the number and then we click on the tick. As soon as you hit the tick, it gets stored in the variable. Can you see? 
number one is now sitting at 12. Enter your second number, and then we will say, uh, let's say eight, and we will click on the tick and the eight. That's the end of the program. That's all it's doing. It's capturing two numbers. Notice the variables are correctly storing the two numbers that we entered and it's staying there. It's part of the program till whenever. Okay, so that's input. You must always remember how to manage input. You will be doing it a lot during programming. Now we want Abby to give us the answer to our calculation. So we will put our say block back there, but we will take out the six and we will take out the two. We don't want those two. What we're going to add is this, watch this. We take number one and we put it in there and we take num two and we put it in the other one. Now look at this, we've got three sections from three different parts of the coding sections in one instruction of code. Look at this, we've got right on the top variables. The variables are sitting in an addition block. So uh, and from the operation section, which is green and the whole green thing together with the numbers is sitting on a say block, which is found in looks. So this one instruction here is combining looks together with operations, together with variables. Far, far, far cry from where we were on the first day when we started looking at programming and we only looked at one or two things and we didn't mix anything up. And again, I remind you about this idea of a carpenter with a toolbox. Can you see, we've got so much of tools and look, I've combined them now. So it will now appear that the sprite will be able to give you your results, okay? And maybe it's okay, now the sprite is just gonna spit out the answer. And you, what you can do if you go to the looks thing is you can, maybe you can say, uh, um, if I add these numbers, The answer, oops, what the W is, let's put three dots, two dots, sorry. That's a little bit of a long, longer sentence to read. So let's put the delay for three seconds. Uh, typing errors from me there, very annoying. Uh, let's get that out. Okay, here we go. So the sprite says, give us your first number. We're using the trick there, the ask and the answer together with the set instruction to capture a variable, then ask and answer again. And then of course, now the sprite will give the result, but look how we've done it. We are not adding, because we don't know what numbers the user is gonna give us. So unlike the program that had six and two, and guys remember, this is just not part of the code, just blocks sitting there on the side. Um, yeah, we, we, we are now uh, not adding two specific answers. We're not putting numbers in the operation block. We are putting variables there. And this is pretty cool because the computer will use whatever number the user gave there. It'll use whatever the number the user gave there and add those two things to get a result. So let's press the play button, right? Let's not use 12 and eight. Let's use two different numbers. Let's use um, six and five. Everyone knows six plus five is 11, right? We wanna use something, uh, then we know the answer easily to see if our program is working, so five. If I add these numbers, the answer is 11, okay? Let's try it again with two different numbers. Let's try some really bigger numbers. Let's try 23 and then 27. And that is, uh, that is 50, okay? So can you see that, um, the sprite is adding whatever numbers, um, whatever numbers the user decides to choose. Okay, so that brings us to uh, how addition and subtraction is done. And well, well, all the basic operations. And look, you, you can experiment here. Now again, I'll try not to waste time in the class, changing these to subtraction. That's something for you to do on your own, right? You, in if you, if you want to be quick, you can just take a picture of this right now. Alternatively, later on, you can download the video. You will have this entire thing. And what I want you to do is, you know, change the uh, the operators and experiment with the other operations, especially division. 
to see how, what the sprite would, what answers you would get when you divide all the you know, numbers, especially numbers like two divided by three, which even on your calculator uh, is 0 0.6666666. It puts a lot of sixes. At the end, it'll put a seven, because that's two thirds. So those are things for you to experiment, right? Um, and and then you can and then you can take it from there. Okay, right now, how much time do I have? Ooh, twenty five minutes. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm also not going to save this program. This is a very basic work on what the sprite is doing. Let's go to a new program. Okay, right now, I am going to. Uh, combine what I taught you today with the things I taught you already about animation. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a rocket. And maybe you can, uh, uh, there we go, rocket ship. Let's take that thing. Okay, and let's delete the little robot guy. And here's our rocket. Okay, now here's a cool thing. Today I'm going to teach you how you can uh, use the arrow keys and the user can move the rocket left right up and down by by using the arrow keys okay and that's obviously in the sensing you've seen that before we used it before we didn't use the arrow keys uh, like we use the thing like the space bar to uh, to to um you know uh this one here so when a particular key is pressed, when we press the space bar, you'll remember uh, we had a sprite that started that car race only when you press the space bar. So we already know how to use um, the sensing section to see what the user presses. And I said, remember I told you, if you click on this arrow, you'll, you'll get a whole list of things. Can you see this uh, stuff there? Uh, where almost all the keys. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's a, almost all the keys on the keyboard. Right, even the numbers, you can even get, even know when the guy pressed the numbers, right? So that's pretty much what we did before. Now let's see what we can do with this robot. First, let's say when the flag is clicked. Now this rocket is pretty big, so it's covering a lot of the screen. I want to drastically reduce its size. I'm going to actually set its size to 40% of its uh, normal size by the time the program begins, right? So let's set its size to 40%. That makes it really quite small. Otherwise, you know, we won't have much movement after two clicks it's gone off the screen. Okay, so let's set the size to 40%. Okay, now we are going to use a new control structure to do this. And I'm gonna teach you a control structure called if, right? Now, before we use the repeat, and I know I taught you the repeat loop, and we had a repeat loop, and we had this sensing button in the repeat loop. But this loop, this is not a loop, by the way. It looks like it because it, it shapes going there, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a loop. It's a simple if instruction. Now, and I just want to take a loop out there to show you the difference. I need to teach you this very carefully. I'm going to put all our loops in here at the moment. And if you look at these three things, you'll see that all that the, these three are all the loops and we've used all these loops, right? Again, go back through the lessons that we've seen, play the videos, you'll see we use them all. You, does anyone notice a difference between this if then control and these three things? Who can notice? This is like a spot the difference. Come on, let's go for it. What's different about, other than the word repeat and until and forever, obviously those are the names for the control that that's obviously going to be different. But there's something that the, the, that the loops have that the if then one does not have. Let's see who, who's very observant. Hey, hey, there we go. Ishmael, thank you so much. They are arrows in the loops. Now let's look at this little white arrow at the bottom. And also this arrow is pointing up. You see, that is the indication that it is a loop. A loop means go back, go back and go do again. So this loop will repeat. Obviously, this is a special loop. It keeps going. It never stops. This one will repeat. You can change this number in there, but this arrow is going to go up 10 times. The repeater until, remember, I told you it's a conditional loop. It goes, the arrow goes up 
every time until uh, whatever you put there is finally correct. And then the loop stops. So these three things have these arrows on the bottom and that's how you know they are loops. The if control does not have an arrow, which means it doesn't go back up there. It simply runs this structure. Now, let me uh, tell you wh why the structure is useful. Okay, the if statement is falls under what we call branching. It, in other words, uh, let's use a, uh, an English word, decision making. Sometimes you have to make a decision. Uh, a decision usually starts with the word if. Um, if you like me, buy me a ring. How's that? So you'll know now, if you get the ring, your boyfriend likes you. If you don't get the ring, hmm, maybe he doesn't like you so much, okay? So that's the idea between, behind the if. Now we can also ask if questions, uh, like, like this, this is a silly question. If you are tall, now that could be anything, you know, what is tall? Well, how high is tall? Uh, we, computers can't define that. So when you use an if, this structure, the question you put in this um, hexagon shape thing there must always be uh, a yes or no question. Now, I know that you must have played this game called 20 questions when you were a kid, right? They play 20 questions and you, you have to ask 20 yes or no questions to try and guess what the person is thinking. Remember the rule on that game, you only allow to ask yes or no questions, right? Am I, am I male? Uh, am I female? Am I, um, am I a person? Am I an animal? Okay. Uh, uh, do I live in South Africa? All those questions can be answered. Yes, no, yes or no, right? So what we're gonna put into this space is we're gonna put the key press button. And the question is, if the key page, if it presses the space bar, then can you see? So now this if instruction is waiting for somebody to press the space key. And if he presses the space key, what do we want to happen? Right? We want, um, we want the robot to move. Well, I'm saying the robot, it's the rocket. You want it to, to, to move, right? Okay, so, um, well, it's kind of already flying, but we just want the user to control it, right? So now we're going to click on the space thing there and we're gonna say up arrow. So read what it says. If the key up arrow is pressed, so this if statement is waiting for somebody to press the up arrow, right? And we want the robot to go up. Now remember up is um, our zero. So we'll have to go to motion and we'll have to say, we'll have to get it to point in direction zero, right? We'll point in direction zero, right? Yes, we do need a, a Ronald says we need a move. If the up arrow is pressed, we want the rocket to go up. If I put a move now, the rocket's going to go, watch the arrow, uh, watch my pointer, because the, the rocket is actually at now, it's standard 90, although it's not, Although its point is not pointing that way, this rocket is not designed by its point, it's designed by this side. Can you see it? Look at this direction there, 90 degrees. 90 degrees is that way. Can you see this arrow? If I put a move there now, the, arrow, the, the rocket will move uh, to the right, even though I press the up arrow. So we're gonna say point in direction zero, and then we will say move 10, right? And, and now, um, Every time the up arrow is pressed, the rocket will move up. Now, the other arrows, remember, I only got up arrow, right? So the, the other arrows are not in our code as yet. But let's run it and press the up arrow and see what happens. Now, can you see? That's a better size. Now, watch what, watch what happens when we press the up arrow. Did you see that? It moved 10 spaces. But only one time because there's a single if statement there. What happens if we put a forever there? Let's put the effort there and let's get that into it. Now let's run the code. Right now, can you see? I'm pressing the up arrow and the rocket's going all the way up to the top. Let's stop there because it's going to go off the screen. And that's all we've done. Right? Let's start it again. Right? Uh, now, okay, the rocket's going up there. 
Now you can see a few things. Here's the, I'm going to press, oh, I can start the program right now. I'm pressing the arrow once. I'm pressing the arrow again, pressing the arrow again. And I keep pressing and it's going up. Now I'm pressing the left arrow, right? Nothing, I'm pressing the right arrow, nothing. I'm pressing the down arrow, nothing. It, it's not going down. Okay, now what have I done here? I have used, um, I have used the arrow uh, button and the key pressed and an if statement to check what the user pressed. Now we want the user to, to press uh, all the four arrows to control the ship, right? So let's duplicate this. And let's make another duplicate. Right now, look at this. I made one for the up arrow, one for the down arrow. I'm making this third one for the left, uh, okay, right arrow. And then of course, the left arrow. So one, two, three, four arrows the user can press, right? Now the up arrow is zero. I did a slide with you where I showed you the which way it should be facing. But if you forget, you can always click here and you can see, right? Down arrow, let's turn this thing down to see what number we get for down, 180, right? So for the down arrow, we must point in direction 180, right? For the right arrow, we want it to go to the right. This is the right here. The right is 90 degrees. And for the left arrow, we want it to go the other way, that way. So we want it to point in this direction here, right? So remember, to use the move instruction, you have to point in the direction that you want the, the sprite to go in. So we're using only the four directions now, left, right, up, and down. Okay, can you, can you see how we got all those and then move 10 steps? Now let's put all of those in the forever loop, right? And here's our code there. Code is starting to get long now. And now let's run this. Now, up, left, right, down. Up, left, now can you see I can control the robot? I can send the rocket in any direction that I want, right? I'm pressing all the arrows now, only the four arrows. Only those four arrows are working, right? So he's going in all these directions. The problem is he's turning. Like, can you see I'm going left now and he's upside down. So the reason for that is because his point, his point is not facing the right place, right? So let's say you didn't want to turn him. Let's just say you didn't want to turn him. Also notice that, let's put, let's put him there. When I start this program, he starts at the top. So it's kind of like, um, you know, so let's, what we'll do is let's start him off in the middle by using a, a go-to instruction. Who can remember what the middle of the screen was? Where's that go-to thing? Oh, there we go. Let's try to 40. The center, let's send him to the center. Center is zero, zero, right? Now, if we run this code, like, can you see? It's 40% of his size and he's now in the middle of the screen. Okay, now we're gonna do some cool stuff, right? I'm going to go back in this thing here and I am going to take this out because I don't want him to point. I'm gonna take this thing out and I'm going to rather ask him to go to a specific place, right? Now, this is the up arrow. I want him to go up, right? I want him to go up. Let's make it instead of 10 moves, five moves. Now up is, let's, I want you to look at the axis. I hope you're all still with me, right? When something goes up, only its Y value will change. Its X value will remain the same, right? So when something goes up, we're increasing. Can you see 53? Now it's gone to 80, right? Then from 80, it's gone. I'm taking, if I take it up, it goes to 904, right? Uh, and, and, and it keeps going. Now I moved it slightly to the left. That's where the X value changed because it's very difficult to use the mouse to go straight up. But if I go straight up, the X value is still 19, but the Y value gets bigger. Now, just like what we're gonna do when we press the up arrow, we actually want to send it to the same X position that it was in. 
So I'm going to put X position there, right? Because it's going up, its Y position will get bigger. So all I do with the Y position is now watch how I use an operator. I choose an operator because I want to make it bigger. I want to add. So I will choose this addition operator that I taught you to use today. And we will take the Y position. Oh, where is that? I lost it. Uh, oh, wrong place I went to. It was motion. Y position, which is here under motion. And I'm going to add five. So the rocket goes five spaces when I press the up arrow. When does this happen? When I press the up arrow, what must happen? The rocket must remain in its same X position. I'm sending it to go to X, but X is the same, but I'm increasing its Y position by five. I'm taking the Y position it was at, and I'm adding five, which means its new location will be five units higher than where it was. Remember, higher because plus is going to make it go up. Okay, now I want you all to help me through the chat. If I had to go to the down arrow, and, and there's the down arrow, which is the next one, right? Let's take this stuff out and let's put a go to instruction in there. Where is the go to? There we go, go to, right? Now, if I press the down arrow, um, what will the X position be? Or what happens when it goes down? Which value changes, the X or the Y? Only one value will change. Okay, help answer on the chat. If I, when we press the, when the user presses the, the arrow on the keyboard that says go down, Will the Y value change or will the X value? Excellent, Ishmael, though the Y value changes. So again, we will take the X position and we will leave the X position as the same. And now, uh, help me out. When I go to the operators, what happens to the Y value when we go down? Does it get bigger or does it get smaller? as we go down. See here's 61, let's take it down. What happened to the Y value? It got smaller. So which of these operations do I need to choose to make the ship go down? Subtraction. We will subtract this time, minus, yes. And that's the Y position. Can you see, go to X, go to the X position. Let's go back to motion and let's select Y position. Oh, I, I lost my subtraction thing. That's why I say always put it in before we slot it into other spaces. So let's put the Y position into that thing. And we're going to subtract five. So it's going to go five down right notice we're not turning him so the ship won't turn it'll stay in the same place now let's go to the right arrow the right arrow takes the ship in the in this direction now which value changes when we go to the right x or y the x and does it get bigger or does it get smaller when we go to the right that's a bit tricky x is let's look x is 70 then it's 94 then it's 131, so getting bigger, isn't it? So for the right arrow, let's take this out. Let's go to motion. Let's go to X, Y. Now we're going to change the X position. And when we go to the right, it's getting bigger. So just like what we did there, we will go to the operators and we will add, but this time we're not gonna put it there to change the Y position. We're going to put it there to change the X position. That's there, right? And we will take the original X position. That means where the rocket is right now. Oh, I keep going to sensing when it's in motion. Right, there's the X position. And I wanna add, that happened again. Uh, let's add, let's put it into the slot first. And we want to add five. And then let's grab it. We don't want to grab here. Then we'll only grab the X position. 
grab it on the green spot and stick it in. And that was on right arrow. See, can you see a right arrow? We want to go X position must change. We want to add five to it. Y position remains the same. See this X and Y values that we are fiddling with here. They, are, they tell you the X and Y coordinates of where the rocket is right now at its present time. So we want to leave, we're not changing the Y position when we go to the right or the left. Right now, if the right arrow makes the X bigger, what will the left arrow do? Right, it will make it smaller. Right, let me just make our screen a bit bigger so we can see more of our code. Let's see more code, right. So, um, so now the left arrow, let's take this out. Right, now we already know, watch how we use blocks that we already want. We can just put them and leave them on our screen. We're gonna need that, we're gonna need that. We are going to need, uh, the left makes the X smaller. So we're going to need a subtraction thingy. Let's keep that there. And we are needing a go to, go to X, Y, right? I, I used this one before, but in case if some of you are getting confused, go to X, Y, we can send the ship to any X and Y coordinate on the screen that we want to. So we are not changing the Y position. The Y position stays because the ship is moving left and right. Left and right only changes x value smaller x value bigger x value smaller x value bigger just like the number line so we want to make it smaller so we're going to take the x position and we are going to subtract five and we're going to stick that in the x position now let's look very carefully at our screen before we run the program um, and and i think we might have this last bit to do before we have to close up because I got two minutes, but you're going to really love this program. It's on the screen now. Uh, let us um, run it. Okay, our screen size is back to normal. And let's press the play button. We're right in the middle. Now I'm going to use my arrow keys left, right, up, and down. Okay. Oh, my program is stuck. Okay, I'm just gonna load this program. I think I saved it on my computer. Mm. Where did I save that? I think I called it that. Okay. Um, right. And let's run. Okay. Now, can you see? I'm moving up. I'm coming down. I'm going to the left. I'm going to the right. I'm going up. I'm going down. Left, right. Okay, I put two variables here in this one, which we're going to use later on. We don't need that now. But if you look carefully at the code, you will see up arrow, change the Y position by adding five. Down arrow, change the Y position by subtracting five. Left arrow, uh, to go to the left, change, subtract from X, it'll get smaller. Now we don't have to, we are not changing the direction of the, um, of the rocket. It can go in any direction, it stays there. Right? The reason we're gonna do this and the reason why I call this program Galaga, remember that there's an old space shooting game called Galaga and what I'm kind of doing with this thing is I'm gonna use this rocket as the rocket that the user controls like this. And can you see, you can get some really cool movements just with left, right, up, down. And then the alien ships are gonna be all on the top of the screen. And I'm gonna program some alien ships to start coming towards the rocket. And I'm gonna add some stuff that's gonna shoot and everything. I'm hopefully, I'm gonna be able to do all this before the end of the week to show you how it works, right? So we're gonna add that cone, but now you can see how um, the green stuff with the operators are working in conjunction with that. And so we're giving uh, one um, uh, increment of five, right? I'm just gonna do one more thing before I close. 
today. If I in change this five to 10, you will see that I get the, the robot should move a lot faster, right? See, we've increased his speed. So you can do speed increase kind of things if you increase the number of positions that he jumps when we are moving across. I thought five was pretty much, you don't wanna to go too far on the screen. And so guys, that is it. You have seen today how we can combine operations together with animation and movement. And I've also taught you how to use the go to X, Y position and use the positions um, that we are in, right? And, and we are out of time. So I'm gonna to end today's lesson out there. I think you can see this whole code. I want you to write this one and experiment with the rocket, okay guys? Uh, sorry, I couldn't take any questions today. I'm trying to do a lot before we end in the week. Uh, I'll give you some chance to talk tomorrow. I wanna to thank you all again for joining me. Uh, I hope you had a good session today. I hope I didn't go too fast. Experiment guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Good day.